Hey there guys and welcome back. Now today what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to finish off showing you the filler. Now last time you were here it took out this massive chunk of sand and you saw it going through there and everything. Now I did think about refilling this place with sand however it's going to take a lot more than I originally had thought of so instead we have a smaller area here that goes up there and I'm just going to basically go over a few things that you can do with the filler. So, placing our filler down here, oh, wrong one, we need to first hit them. Now you'll notice there's no redstone anywhere. Apparently you can do this without redstone. All redstone does to a landmark is uh, if we get some redstone just quickly now. When you put the redstone on a landmark it brings out the blue lines. And the blue lines just basically so you can go, ah oh, yes I need to place that landmark there, that landmark there. And also what you can do, which is quite neat and I didn't know this, if I now right click, it will just fill in the last point for me because it has three of the places it's meant to go already. So we'll just pop these back out so we can move on to the filler. Now placing the filler next to the landmark will do what it did last time and it will uh, allow us to basically start creating. So the filler has several modes that are all very useful. Some not so much. Uh, the first of all we already saw was this one, which clears out the entire area that it's looking at. Now what I want to do quickly is show this one here. Three bricks, three glass. Now the reason why I want to show this is because what it should do is we actually have a um, lot of holes under here and a lot of dirt at the bottom. So we're going to take out that as well. What we're going to do is we're going to um, remove, well not remove, we're going to add a flooring. So I think if we take out this cobblestone as well it should fill this in. But I'm not 100% sure. We shall have a look see. You'll notice I have three blocks of marble here. This is just so I can stick them in. Here we go. Now what this does is it builds itself a base of where it knows the holes are. So you get this kind of two block high where it's like this. But these places here don't have a hole so it just does them one block. Uh, it doesn't do them at all. should do them one block but it doesn't. So we'll just allow this to take all our marble, bl uh, marble bricks and basically fill this in for us. Now the best thing about this is it will fill in under the filler for you. But when you then empty it out it will just give you back all these bricks instead. And it will empty out itself because obviously it's done its task which was to fill the floor. And we now have a nice marble base. So we'll just pick up all our marble that is spewed out at us. Uh, we now have our marble base. It's actually left a block over here. Oh no, it hasn't. That block's just glitching badly. Uh, we'll put you on there, smack you off the minute there. Okay. <clears throat> so, that was the easy floor filling tactic that you can use. Looking back in this chest, we have this design. This design is interesting. You see, what this design will do is it will create a pyramid for us using the blocks that we obviously provide. I might actually, before I set this off, I'm just going to get a bunch more marble brick so that I can just give all the marble brick to it so they won't be sat there trying its hardest with minimum resources. Uh, it will stop when it runs out of resources and will not work again until you give it the resources. So it's quite a nice little method for you to use. There we go. Uh, we shall place our block here. Now, it will build itself a two base immediately. Uh, you can remove the very bottom of the base if you really want to, but it will always build a two base, even if it's building a house or anything like that. We'll get onto house making after this. It does go quite quickly when it's powered by an energy link, and uh, you can see that it's kind of going in the middle now. So what this setting will do is build us this. A small little pyramid slash crypt that you could probably use if you wanted like, you know, a scary pyramid option or something. And you just walk on inside, chip away a bit, have some staircases here as you walk in. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get that sand back, so we'll just spawn block in a second. Right. Uh, now we've finished with that though, we will have to clear the area again to get all our blocks back. Now hopefully clearing this area will mean that all the blocks will fall but not only that it should allow that the bottom blocks here which are marble these here that we filled up before 
will not be cleared because they're below the points because it actually fills in below itself. The filler is quite handy for doing that and it also means like if you want um, an infinite digger what you'd have to do is set up a filler to be piped in with gravel and it'll just keep dropping the gravel one block below itself which will then obviously fall into your quarry and your quarry will keep mining that gravel it'll put the gravel back until it gets flint so it's a good way to get a lot of flint if you actually need flint it's left one block no it hasn't, I think that's a glitch yeah uh, it might be getting a bit glitchy at the moment uh, but yeah it should be okay for a little bit it's mostly because, if you look now, I have a quarry here, a quarry there, and my old quarry over there. And all three of these quarries are going into the new piping system that I've set up. Uh, I did set up a blue sorting piping system, and it had a few faults in it that I didn't realise at first. And I will be going over that, probably in this episode, because it's going to be a small episode otherwise. So the next thing we want to try is basically this one. I, I'm taking the bricks out, and I don't actually need to take them out. Now this will build us a house. Now the house construction on this thing is not exactly the best. Or at least I've always noticed it's not the best. It has quite a big flaw with that. I'll take that out of there. Because what it will do is it will build the two base like it always does. So this will now be the base of your house. But after building this two base, it will start with the walls. Now you see it's just going up there. It's just going to build us around walls that we can basically do whatever in. So these walls will come all the way around and then it will install us a roof at the very top of where the landmarks are. In our case it's where that bar is. So here's the roof, one block above, one block normal. So it's also annoying like if you want to take this house down afterwards it wouldn't do it. Now you can't just give it anything. I thought first you'd be able to like give it windows and put windows in and doors and such it's the same deal with the builder, it's lazy. You have to work out the coordinates you want. So say if I wanted, I don't know, all of this to be marble, but then have glass for two layers, I'd have to work out what the glass it would need would be, and then put the glass in myself where it would place it, which becomes tedious really, because it builds the walls one by one. You saw it building this wall first, then this wall, then the front wall, then the other side wall, so it does become a bit tedious and you don't really want to be doing that. Uh, but yeah, it's not a bad little house to have really. And uh, it does leave you two blocks at the top. So that you can say, knock out these blocks here. And you could easily put lighting in. So glowstone along the top. Uh, if you set it up with the landmarks as well, my favourite feature is. It will build where the landmarks are and you can then make it symmetrical. So you can actually have a house that's symmetrical for once. I know that that's something I always like. Uh, we'll just quickly use this to get rid of them all. Turn on magnet mode and we'll just suck in all these bricks. Now the very top will not clear so I will have to clear this for it. Because it's um, outside our landmark zone. Oops. Because it builds two up, two down basically. And it will build one... It should build basically... The two layers at the bottom will be within the landmark zone, but the two at the top will not. One will be out, one will not. So, bit of an issue there, but what do you really expect? As I've said before, I believe that most of these machines that I'm showing you now, the filler, the architect and the builder, are the laziest machines in tech it. They're the kind of machines that don't do anything for themselves. So we'll whack back in all our marble now. Whack, whack, there we go. Take out our glass. Uh, the next one is a stair design. Now, this should build as a staircase, and I was going to do this before, but it didn't go that well. Uh, I was going to build it over there, but obviously it does the two base again. So over there, it would have to build all of this area with a two base immediately. But what this should do is, it should build us a staircase, and it'll work on the principles of like we already have, you know, two steps here so that we can go up like so and it should stop building where I am yeah it does two by two and you've got two stairs there as well which isn't that bad so you just have to go through basically and knock out these I'm actually doing this while it's working which is not the best thing because then it'll have uh, 
hissy fit and be like, you're destroying my creation, why would you do this? But yeah, you can knock out the stairs as much as you want and just make them normal for you to get up. Oops. Uh, you knock out all these, la 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 la, la 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 la. And what you end up with is an actual staircase, not the rubbish one that that built just a second ago. And now we can watch the sunset. <sighs> but of course, I'm turning it back to dawn, so it's over there now. Over where all the machines are. Uh, this one over here, I'll probably explain in this episode as well. It's just a very simple obsidian generator. Now, I did mention that I was going to build one of those and make it completely automated. Uh, I believe I might have done that, but uh, it's not fully automated because the deployer does need you to put redstone in. Uh, I believe that's basically it for the filler. I've showed you everything it can do. I've showed you the clear billions of times. Uh, I showed you the building house. I think the only thing that I haven't shown you is how it can fill up an entire area. So actually, you know, being named the filler and everything, it's the one thing that you'd actually expect it to do. But where you place the landmarks around here, what it will do is it'll fill in this entire area with whatever you specify. So say if you wanted, say, this sand mountain here, you could just tell this to fill in a massive, like, square of sand, and then you just go around the side placing a few sand blocks, and boom, you have a mountain that's already made. See, the filler for things like this, these massive kind of chunks that I've just cut out, it wouldn't be that bad, but a quarry does the same job and doesn't drop anything, but of course the quarry does put the frames around the side, which I've not yet found a way to remove the frames, but, uh... If I find a way, I'll probably make a video about it, but I don't think there is a way. The frames are obviously there, and if you pick the quarry up after it's done, the frames will, co will be continuously there, just so you don't like fall into it, I suppose. So it's now emptied this entire place out, and we're going to stick back in all the marble brick. Then, I'm going to quickly pour in even more marble brick, because it requires a lot to fill an area. So uh, if you did this, you'd have to... Oh my god, it's gone all in the crafting bench. Ready? If you did do this, you'd really have to have quite a lot of resources on you and really be sure that you want to fill up a part of the land with marble. So we'll just stick that in there. There we go. So it's got an entire inventory full of marble now. And when we tell it to do this, it receives the power, it turns green, and it begins building. It'll do it quicker than you, because obviously it works by twos. It always seems to work by twos. I imagine it's because it's the binary equivalent, really, because you always have two. But yeah, it'll work by twos all the way around. That block is filled in, it's just being stupid again. But it'll just go by twos all the way over until eventually it gets to the very top, and it'll just fill in the top for you, and what you'll have is a block of marble. Now let's see how much it's gone through. So it's not gone through one line yet, that's not that bad, but we're getting to the top now, and... It's just getting through that first line. So you'd need quite a lot of marble anyway. This is a lot of marble to be placing down like this. Obviously, because I'm in creative mode, I can just spawn the marble in and cheat. But yeah, it is now building the very top of it. Uh, the other thing you've noticed is these. Now, when you first remove the filler... Ooh, I just dropped on that sand. Uh, they don't go away. I've not found a reason why. This is another reason why I don't like using them, because they just don't go away. But uh, if I re-log, it should just vanish. Which, I suppose, means that it's obviously some kind of server-side uh, glitch. So, this has basically built our house again, but uh, without one block on the top. And, it's not hollow at any point, you'll just keep mining down until you see all of it done. So, now that fillers are over, I'm going to quickly whiz over here. And we'll just test out my obsidian generator. The obsidian generator, this was a lot of effort to make. Now, it works on the premise of only having two bits at the moment in here. You can see the deployers on either side and the block breakers here. Two pistons there and a piston there. The reason for all this is, the deployers will deploy redstone onto the floor like it has done there. The block breakers are there to take away the obsidian when it's formed and the lava pours on it from this open piston. But these two here actually get rid of all the lava that's on the top as well to stop the lava pouring down and just ruining the water input. It was quite hard wiring this up 
because if you did it to a lever and everything, the redstone current will obviously always be on it. It's a bit of a bother. So I did it to a button. Now a button doesn't open the uh, piston up there very well to kind of like have the lava drop down. The lava's too slow and doesn't get through when the piston's already come back. So, I had to play around a lot with redstone currents. You can see tons of them around here. These are all repeaters telling the block breakers to go off, you know, af uh, before the deployers. So, the deployers will place down the redstone after the obsidian has been taken away. Ah, it's raining again. Uh, over here, let me just go around the other side. This wire down here is actually going to our back piston. Now, it comes around here into a latch switch. Once pressed, this will turn on and will keep the current flowing so that a button can be acted like a lever, really. But the minute it gets here and passes into this repeater, the repeater hold it for a certain amount of time and then turn it back, send it back round into the latch, turning the latch back off again. All that's doing is making it so that this piston will be on like a bit longer. Well, it'll be off a bit longer because, as you can see here, it is, it is actually wired up at the moment to be on. So this is a knock gate. When the red wire goes into it, the knock gate turns it into, you know, on. Because it's saying that the red pulse is not there, that's good. The minute it comes through and it's actually on, then the knock gate will turn off, which will move the piston backwards and the lava will drop down onto our redstone. It is quite complicated, it's probably not something you'd ever build in tech, it's just because of the fact that obsidian is not really that much needed. And you can just condense it very easily. Uh, obsidian has the same EMC as redstone. So if you're thinking about making, you know, obsidian generator in order to make obsidian and then condense that so you can get more stuff, don't. The only two uses I've found for it at the moment is it makes it so much easier to just have your own obsidian pile so that you could just make your own obsidian if you've got a lot of redstone. And the other thing is that, um, ah, there, there was another reason, trust me. Oh yeah. On a uh, transmutation table, which you probably play, play tech at the bottom, know what that is, is the smaller version of an energy condenser. You have to place in blocks, basically, and it works on the fact that you can have a block or you can have fuel. Now, redstone will count as fuel in there, and you'll be able to make like glowstone and things like that out of it, but you won't be able to make blocks. Obsidian will count as blocks. So all we're doing is changing our fuel into blocks. So we'll just give this a quick go, just to see if it works. And what should happen is, this lava should begin to fall down. Or not. Hmm. I guess it, the latch still needs a bit of work. Or I've not wired this up properly. Oop. Oh, there's a button here. Okay, so this button looks like it's the one that I've wired up. Uh, as, you, as you saw though, the current is not that good. Hmm weird. Uh, the reason why is because obviously it's probably this repeater needs to go forward one more. Uh, we really need another way to turn this on, really. But we'll go around here, switch this, fly over. It kept on for a bit longer there, but the lava's still not down. So you have to do a little bit of playing with this, just to get the repeater to like hold the current a little bit longer and not just immediately shut it off. So if we try it again now, there we go, the lava's got down, but it's already dead. And it's gone. Uh, what should happen is these deployers, yeah, will open and put that in when that's stopped. Uh, we will have as well though, because I've messed this up quite a lot, the block breakers will take any block that's in front of them, including the redstone. So all the redstone will also be siphoned out if you haven't built this correctly. So you won't lose any, don't worry about that. Uh, we'll press this button one more time. One more time. The lava comes down. Will it stay? Yes, it will. It's on. Ah, uh, but these pistons were a bit too eager. Uh, yeah, we got one redstone, I think one obsidian there. Yeah, here they are. So, those pistons would obviously need, you know, a bit more backlog, which at the moment, they're almost full. Flicking that on there will make it even slower. Now, I do believe the only problem with that is they're wired up, obviously, with the block breakers. Because the block breakers have to go kind of really slow. Because you want the obsidian taken out, but after the lava's been on. 
So the pistons will push the lava off and everything for you, and it'll all be hunky dory. Uh, we'll try it one more time. One more time. I keep seeing that now, that's going to be in my head for ages. Uh, we should have slowed down the block breakers now, as well as these pistons, so when it comes over, it should shut. The lava's actually gone before the pistons have even activated. So it's a lot of playing around, but the redstone's been put back in, which is nice. And I do believe I broke everything. Hey! Yeah, I am very breakable with things. So we've got ourselves three obsidian at the moment, and five redstone from the failing. It's already getting down to night time again, so I must have been doing this quite a while. Uh, I used to time my episodes. I basically stopped that right now. Uh, so I'll probably fix that up and show it to you at another time. Uh, the next thing to show you is this thing here. I was going to do stuff with it, but I really don't think that's going to work now. Essentially, what I was going to do is a frame mover. What's it called? Uh, I will have it in here. Frame motor. The frame motor also operates on your blue electricity power. Now, I did make in this little house over here a use for the frame motor and a lot of other cool stuff, but we'll go for the cool stuff in another episode. Now, it says up and down here. The reason for this is these blocks here will actually move up and down. The blocks on the floor and everything, it's really just a graphical glitch because these are actually covers. So the covers aren't displaying correctly. Now if we press down, it will move the entire wall down twice so that we can't get through. And if we press up, the entire wall will come up. Yay! Uh, it's rather complex to make, to be honest. I didn't think it would be. But I do have a system out in the desert that I'll just fly over to and quickly show you before I end this episode. The reason why I was thinking of using these is they're not very... They're not something you'd use a lot of, really. Because what you do is you drop a block on these things. Now, these aren't the best things to show you with levers. But uh, when a redstone impulse goes into this now and it's wired up to blue electricity, it will... Move them forward. Move them forward. Move them forward. Move them forward. Dunk. Nice. But yeah, if you wanted to do this on a grander scale, like the big thing I had over there, you have to look more at this kind of thing. Uh, I played around with this quite a lot and managed to break it excessively. So what they do is, these little frame things here, they move them up and down, basically, and they stick to everything. They are purpose for sticking to things, I'll tell you that. So, you have to put covers on them, basically, like I have done here, which will stop them sticking to things as they go up. You also need them to be powered with these. And if you were going to move, say, this sand block and this sand block, it wouldn't work. What you actually have to do is get those frames, because they act as sticky blocks, and they will stick things together for you. So if we do that and this, what should happen now is the frame is stuck to the sand and the marble, and when we move it... Yeah, okay, I admit that was not meant to happen. I have no idea why that did happen. Will that work? Nope, that's still going to move. It's probably because you need the frame on there. Yeah, there you go. So uh, it's because, obviously... You need the frame on the bottom. I did just think you could do it with anything, but obviously you need the frame there. Then you can put, say, this. Uh, you'll need another frame after that, then this, and then another frame, and then this. And so you have a wonderful, whimsical contraption with loads of things that just looks a complete and utter eyesore, and you'll be all like, oh god, what have I made? So when we tick this, our contraption moves. Okay, part of the contraption's moved. All the rest of it has had enough, and it's thought, nah. Bothered. Ah, that will be because of me putting these here, and I forgot about that. Now, the frames will move if there's nothing in front of them. So obviously these are coming this way. Having blocks on the front would stop them moving. Hmm, it's not working. Yeah, well, I've not really played around with these tons. As you can tell, they're, they're quite annoying to work as well. I don't really see much use for them either. Yeah, that's annoying. Ah, I think I might have figured it out though. 
think it's just because we didn't put frames all the way along it and it was having an upset day. Yeah, because obviously if I put a marble block here and a sticky here, this marble block is stuck to there, but this frame isn't actually going to be stuck to this, so when it moves, it won't move with that frame. So what you have to do is have frames all the way up, then put your marble blocks like around the outside-ish, kind of. Let's make it look weird and magical. Oh, well, no, no, that's not what I do. There we go. And over we go. There you go. So yeah, that was pretty much what I wanted to show you. I was going to do an entire episode on these, but uh, if I do ever get this gate working, and I figure them out a lot better than I am right now, then I probably will do an episode on them. But at the moment, making a massive fortress gate is just a lot of work on something that I don't know much about. Uh, we've explored quite a lot of things in these lands. As you can see, I've completely ravaged them. Uh, I did say I was going to show you the new upgraded filter. That, oh, well, I'll give it away now. New upgraded sorting system that I have. So, last time I didn't realise that when these passed through, obviously they were coming in really quickly. So I put a filter here instead. So you can see it's passing through like two blocks of cobblestone. Now, this can actually sort multiple items at once. It can sort a stack of 64 cobblestone into brown or 64 coal into yellow. It's really efficient. The other thing is this. You'll notice this looks quite a bit different and I've got a lot that I've not turned on. The reason for this being is, this here is basically a generic colour. Anything that comes in, it'll count as the generic colour if it doesn't have it already preset. So if I put a flower in there, it will count as a generic colour. Now if you don't set it as this and you set it as something else, which I think I have a machine to show you that, this is really an episode just to go around quite a few things and finish off the fillers. It might be a bit long, I've not timed it, I don't know how long it's going to take, but there you go. Might be a nice long episode full of things that you might want to know. Uh, this here was my experiment. And um, what this is doing is the same thing, really. But we're going to change this. That's what it was on before. Now when I put sand in here, it's broke it. It's not sending it, but the sand's going. Now the reason for this is because it doesn't know where to put sand, it's not a predefined thing, so it doesn't know what to do with it, so it stops sending. Now if you've got a quarry piping in here, well that sand's not there, it's just piping and piping and piping, your chest is getting full, things are happening, it's becoming a bit of an issue, so you have to quickly switch that back, so then it will send everything through in stacks of 64, colour them brown, and send them down what I like to call the poo pipe. The poo pipe is where you're going to be sending all your things that you just consider poo. Things to be, you know, condensed or things you won't use or anything like that. Uh, the black building is what I'm hoping to have working by the next time you come and should be a brand new sorting facility with many possibilities. If you're moving house or anything like that, that's kind of sorting facility that I'm building over there would be much better than the one that I actually have set up here of which you can still see everything going through and whizzing through to where it's meant to go. The sorting pipes, I must admit, I was a bit angry with them when they did screw up and everything went wrong. But I've sort of realised now why they went wrong and I fixed that problem. Uh, let's shut this. So yeah. I shall leave it there, guys. I'm hilarious. Thanks for watching.